Any other questions? Yes, please. Uh, it's a question for Jean. Um, I was wondering, did you also have a female best friend in the world of dancing back then? A female best friend? A female friend. best friend. Oh, like okay. did, you all, did you have a female best friend? In dancing? In dancing. dancing. Well, several, actually, not just one. You, you become very close and friendly with, with your, all your dance buddies. We go around to all the clubs, we were everywhere. We became great friends. And hard to say there was, there was one. There were, they were just all individual and different. And we were all competitive, but in a nice way not in a mean way, and, and rooting for one another. And it was a wonderful experience, just wonderful. I wouldn't have missed one ounce of any of it, ever. Remember that, you friends, you people that are in, in this, it's the most wonderful time of your life, whether you know it or not, it is. And you meet people and you keep them as friends for years. Like Barbara and I, you know, people, when we're traveling, you know, on the flight, are you sisters? Yes, we are. We're life sisters. That's us. And there's, uh, we have two girls left in our troop that's still alive. Uh, one is my cousin. She lives in North Carolina. The other one is a girl. She was, she was 18 years old, and she was a waitress in Small's Paradise. And we used to go in there to party. When we were, uh, uh, when we come off the road, we would go in there. And she said, "Oh my gosh!" She said, "Oh, I wish I could go with you all and dance with you all." And you know, every every time we came, she was like that. You know, <laughs> one night <laughs> we went in Small's. Sonny said, "You still want to be a dancer?" She said, "Yes." He says, "We're leaving now." She lived right next door to Small's Paradise. She took off her apron. She went to her boss, she said, I quit. She ran upstairs. That girl was down in 10 minutes, packed, ready to go. She got in the car and left with us. Mm. Whoa. Yeah, yeah. And, and we're friends today. She lives in uh, Alabama and we stay contact. You know, she call, we call each other for our birthdays. We send Christmas cards. Once in a while, we get together in New York, you know. And uh, it, it makes friends for life, it really does. Uh, I, you know, it's, Lindy Hop is an institution among, among itself. You know, like, and you meet people, and look at this lady here, I love her. I love her. You know, she walked in here today, I'm a sugar barber, you know? You meet people, I, some I don't remember their names, but. I'm very good with faces. I'll remember faces. And when we go to Harangue every year, oh my goodness, the people that come up and, and, and give us a hug, they're, they're from Taiwan and uh, uh, Madagascar, you know, Russia, uh, France, and, and it's, it's, it's so thrilling, you know? And it's Lindy Hop. It, it brought us all together, you know? It really did. And it's such, it's such a great thing. And uh, when you meet people, you know, get their numbers, keep in touch. You know, you all, you know, keep in touch with each other, you know. When you're going to these different uh, dance festivals, you know, you know, call them and say, listen, I'm going to such a thing. Are you going, you know? I'll meet you there, you know, that type of thing. It's, it, it just makes, it makes the world a better place. Like Norm always said. <laughs> Yeah, and for, for the contact, it's quite easy because you find at least two of these ladies on Facebook. <laughs> well, I didn't mean to get emotional, but I, I remember what Norma said. Give me a bucket of fried chicken. Yeah. <laughs> a bucket of fried chicken and yeah. it was something by else. Count, uh, tuned by Count Basie. Yes, and she says, uh, and, and I'll make the world a better place or something yes. like that. Yeah. That's her favorite, her favorite yeah. thing. I, it's in the book, 
It's in the book. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I read it, I, I remember her saying that, you know, all the time. And it's true. It's very true. There would be less wars, you know, and more peace, I think, you know, if people got along the way we get along, you know? Yeah. I think so. So I think there was another question on the side. Oh, even more. Okay. Yes. Uh, so my question is, uh, what about the 50s and rock and roll? Uh, did it change anything in, in your dance? Was it a different scene? Was it the same people uh, doing new dances? What, what was it like? You're saying what about the 50s, you said? Oh, yeah, only when you can brought in the the uh, rock and roll, and you brought in uh, the twist era. Uh, we did it. We did it on stage. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you see, all right? Uh, the same people doing a different kind of dance. Wasn't it some other people? No, 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 no. No, you know, everybody that was dancing then in the Savoy, we did the same thing. Everybody, hey, we did what was, in, what was out then. But we didn't forget about our Lindy, you know? We did our Lindy, we did our twists, you know, Chubby Checker, whatever, yeah, we did it all. Yeah, yes. Do you remember how many years later you started with tap dancing after the Lindy Hop? With tap dancing? Yeah. This was before Lindy. I started tap dancing when I was four. Way before Lindy Hop. Before, before yes. Lindy. I started Lindy at, at 14. It's a yeah. little bit like David Hermlin, who was singing yesterday and tap dancing. He started drumming at the age of three and tap dancing at the age of four. And nobody forced him. He just started to the music he heard. So I think the rhythm moves are even easier to do when you're a kid. You just try to get the rhythm and express yourself. And then later comes the choreographed steps or the right. learned steps. Oh, I remember something very nice in the pedestrian zone. Yes, in the pedestrian zone, there was a skiffle band playing. And a small kid, maybe two years old, stood in front of this band and made something. I still didn't find out how to do it. It was a baby. And bouncing, 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 bouncing. And the bounce was perfect. It was such a perfect bounce, I see, on you, but I never can reach it. You lose it when, when you're not a kid anymore. It was just the natural reaction. Unless you keep it up. Yeah, you know, you yeah. but we had to learn rhythm. it again. Yeah. We had to learn it again because yeah. we lost it. With you had to learn it again, yes. maybe. <laughs> oh. Oh. Thank you. I love you. <laughs> so there was another thing arising, Gregor. Yeah, I have yeah. a question. Uh, during the revival of the linear, did you also have some, let's call them dance groupies like Leonard Westerlund or Ryan Francois, who came to, up to Frankie Manning and asked him, can you show us uh, the Lindy Hop? Did you ever have private students who came up to you? And we say, did. Um, and, and you we did have private. Oh, yeah. Like oh, yeah, we've done. Some yes, yes. I met a young lady in Harangue that was from Italy. And she talked with me, made an appointment with me to come to, New come to Miami for a week to take lessons from my son and I. Yeah, she lived in Italy. And I, I, I said, oh, she, she asked me price, whatever, blah, 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 you know? And uh, I gave her my address and everything. I said, I told my son, I said, you know, I went home, I told my I said, we might have a student for a week. I said, I don't think it's gonna happen, but we might, you never know. She showed up on that day. <laughs> she stayed in Miami for a week, and she took classes. We, we, we gave her classes every day for, for a week. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, once in a while, people ask me, you know, because do you have a, no, I don't have a studio, you know, but I'll run into somebody in Miami, and they'll want to uh, have, take lessons from me or something. And my daughter works at Barry University, and sometimes she can get me a room, and I do that once in a while. 
and give them, give them you know, a lesson. If 